is Andy from the Car Boutique and welcome to part two of TCB's Beginner's Guide to Detailing. So in part one we looked at the first two stages of our four stage process that we're covering in this mini series. So stage one was clean, stage two was decontaminate, stage three is what we're doing today, machine polishing and all that kind of stuff. And stage four is your sealants, waxes and all that kind of good good um, products to use. So um, if you haven't seen part one, I fully encourage you to go and have a look at it to see what stage we're up to, but we're essentially, we've got clean and um, contaminant free um, paint work. And now we're going to go on to a bit of correction, mopping, um, machine polishing. And that's what this part is all about. So we're going to do a bit of talky talky stuff here. We're going to look at what, what you're actually doing when you're machine polishing. Um, and we're going to look at some of the products you're going to use, some top tips, etc. And we're going to go outside um, and we're going to show you um, the actual techniques um, that will give you the best results. Now, this is aimed at the beginners, all right? So someone who's into their car detailing wants, wants to make that next step, okay? They've reached a crescendo of where they can go with, with glazes and all that kind of stuff. But as we all know, to get that top gloss, you need your paintwork as flat as possible. Okay, scratch free, blemish free and all that kind of stuff. And that's what this process is good about. It's about leveling that top coat, that clear coat. Okay, so you can get the best results. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at, okay, is what you're actually doing to your car when you're machine polishing. Okay, so we're gonna have a quick look at um, what you're actually doing to your car when you're actually polishing or machine polishing using all these co compounds and all that kind of stuff. So um, I've sort of improvised here. Okay, I was gonna draw a diagram on a whiteboard, but that's a bit sad. All right, so I thought I'd get a stack of microfibers and show you, uh, can I think it works quite well. Okay, so right at the bottom, okay, we've got the metal, bod metal body panel, okay, the actual metal of your car, and that's gonna have some kind of phosphate, some kind of electrode coat, which is gonna protect that from corrosion. Straight above that, okay, we've got this um, section here that we're showing, you know, that I'm showing in white, and that's the primer, okay? So that's gonna be um, sort of level any sort of inaccuracies in the actual metal um, and actually protect the metal, but also facilitate or add or promote adhesion, okay, between your base coat, the color, okay, the metal itself. We're not really worried or shouldn't be too worried about those two, okay? The two that we're really interested in is the actual base coat, the color, the paint, and the super important bit when it comes to detailing machine polishing, it's all about this top bit, this clear coat. Okay, so we've got the clear coat and the paint, and they're the two that we're really worried about. All right, now, as a beginner, okay, okay, you need to sort of appreciate what's actually happening when you're, when you're applying, okay, your machine polisher to it. And essentially what you're doing is you're taking little bits of this clear coat off. So you can clearly see, you've got to be careful that you don't take it all off, and go and go straight down to the paint. So to put into context what was sort of the dimensions, all right? The actual paint system, when you hear, to the t uh, hear the term paint system, it's referring to anything above the, the, the metal, okay? So that includes your primer, your base coat, and clear coat. And to put into context, an average figure for a car's sort of paint system is anywhere between sort of 80 and just short of 200. It's, it's a massive range, which keep the figure simple. Okay, so uh, we're talking microns, all right? So let, let's just say, okay, ours is, I don't know, 100 microns to keep, it, to keep it simple. A micron is a millionth of a meter, okay, or a thousandth of a millimeter. So if we've got 100 microns, we're looking at 0 0.1 of a millimeter, all right? That's all we've got to play with, all right? A tenth of a millimeter, okay, has got everything that I've just discussed above the actual um, metal paint itself. So we need to be very, very cautious of what we're doing, but don't be scared of this process. If you watch what we're doing outside, okay, um, it's gonna assist you, okay? And it's, it's good fun and it's very rewarding, but there's a couple of things um, that can help you on the way. Now, um, because you potentially don't know the history of your car, you don't know whether someone's machine polished in the par past, they may have taken all of that off and you're left with about 10 microns of clear coat. Um, you're not gonna know that until you start machine polishing, take that off and then your pad's going all the color of your car. You then know you cut right through here, okay, you're onto the paint. So you could invest in a paint depth gauge, all right, the ones I've used are between one and 200 pounds and they will give me the depth of the paint system. You can go hundreds and hundreds of pounds and they can actually differentiate between the sort of the, the clear coat, the paint and, the, and then the primer and all that kind of stuff. But um, you don't really need to invest with that <clears throat> until you get more into it or you're doing other people's cars, okay? Because you need to know what you're playing with. How much clear coat can you cut, okay, all right, safely? 
all right you don't want to get someone's car all right start machine polishing it and straight away through to the paint because then it's your problem which is bad times all right so if you know the history of the car brilliant if you've got a paint depth gauge it will give you an indication of the system it won't necessarily tell you how much clear coat but it'll give you a starting point okay so if you go and plump a de uh, put a paint depth gauge on a car and it's measuring 50 microns it's it's had some history all right you pretty much know you haven't got much clear coat but if you go and do it and it's 300 you're thinking 300 all right it should be that high you probably then know okay it's had a paint job at some point and at that type point you've got to be cautious as well because you don't know whether that 100 and, you know 280 is paint and there's a thin clear coat so lots to consider i'm not trying to scare you i'm just giving you an awareness of, of the kind of stuff you need to be cautious of but if you've got a new car or you know your car hasn't been machine polished in the past what we're going to be discussing now is pretty pretty safe okay so um, a couple of top tip tips then we'll go into it a bit of detail okay lots and lots of polishes lots of different strength of compound lots and lots of um, compounds cut differently all right so sort of the top tip <clears throat> which one to start with now this is where you having a look at your paint work is essential if you've only got tiny little scratches you're not going to go you know just in the top layer of your clear coat you're not going to use an aggressive compound that's going to take off that much because you only needed to take off that much you just <clears throat> unnecessarily cut through all that clear coat all right conversely if you go over with a compound all right and you've got a big scratch there and it only takes off a little right you might need to step it up go a bit more aggressive or have another pass with your medium compound and progressively work your way down all right so there's experience involved with this there's, there's knowing that, and feeling your product and you know your, your polish or your compound your pad combination as to what you need to do but the top tip is go in light to start with. Don't go in heavy handed, take off all this. Yes, all your scratches have gone, but half your clear coat's gone as well. You know, look at how deep your scratches are. Progressively work your way down to that scratch where it's leveled out, okay, and you haven't wasted, you know, the removal of all that protective clear coat. All right, so I um, hope you understand what I'm trying to say. All right, that comes with a bit, bit of experience and practice, all right? And I practiced a good year on a couple of car bonnets to get a feel for what I was doing, knowing what one to start with. Now, um, I've gone, um, I've looked at my test bonnet, okay? And it, the scratches aren't too bad, so I'm just gonna use a two stage, okay? So when you hear stages, one stage is they're just going over once, okay? Two stage, they're using a combination of two, Okay, so two passes, maybe a medium aggressive one and a finishing one, but you can have three and four and five stage passes where it's, you know, there's a lot and lot of damage. They're progressively working their way down the strengths of the compounds, finishing on a finishing um, polish at the end. Okay, so all become clear as we go through this tutorial. And I know I'm throwing a lot at you, but there's, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. So that's essentially what's happening. So we're going to go on to look at some of the kit. OK, um, and some recommendations as to good starting kits to buy, etc. OK, and then we'll go outside and show you the actual techniques so you can at least start having a, a go at this. But it's all good fun. And if you're at the point whereby you just can't push through, you've taken your car, OK, using waxes and all that kind of stuff to a certain point, machine polishing is going to jump you ahead. OK, it is going to make such a big difference if you're keen on your car detailing. Very, very useful tutorial to watch. So uh, let's go on to the next bit. Okay, so we've had a quick look at some of the basic theory behind machine polishing and what you're actually doing uh, to your paint system. We're now going to look at what kind of kit you're going to need. I'm just going to whiz through this, all right? Um, there's lots and lots of manufacturers out there doing some excellent stuff. I'm just going to share my experience, okay, of what I've got, all right? So obviously, straight away, you're going to need a machine polisher. Now, the two sort of that I use, okay, and these come in various sizes, as you can see, is the sort of the, the one of the market sort of standard ones actually it's the roops lhr 15 okay mark ii so that's my big machine polisher all right and i've got a smaller version the mini bigfoot okay for smaller areas now these are what they call da machines dual action all right so first uh, sort of tip on machines go for a da to start with they're a lot more forgiving so and um, what's the alternative when you can get just rotary ones and all a rotary one is the spinning disc go round and round and round and round and round in one plane you can see with the dual action although this is going round really really fast okay it's also got a secondary orbit all right so this bit's going round but as it's going round it's following another orbit so the benefit of that is all right you've not got concentrated concentrated rotation on one bit of the paint all right 
There's going to be less heat, okay, slightly less cutting power, but it's safer. And certainly for a beginner, I would definitely start off with a dual action polishing machine. All right. Although I use um, these roots are uh, cheaper versions. I think this was with all the kit around about four hundred pound. You can get cheaper ones for a couple of hundred pounds, and I will be doing a demo very shortly after I've done this on machine polishers. I've got some expensive ones and some cheap ones. Okay, so um, have a read of that before you go and buy. So you're going to need a machine. <clears throat> the next thing you're going to need is um, polishes. All right, now there's loads and loads of polishes on the market. I personally use the Roop system of polishes and the Kilowax um, um, system of polishes, um, um, but there are lots out there. And like I said, um, I'm just giving you my feelings and my guidelines. You will naturally find a machine you're happy with, a polish system that you're happy with, and a range of polishing pads you're, you're, you're happy with, because everyone has got slightly different preference. Okay, some people apply slightly more pressure, and some people like multi-stage, like a three or four stage machine polish, where you're gonna do it with a, a harsh compound, slightly less, slightly less, and then a finishing compound. Some people just go for the two, okay, which is a compounding, get rid of scratches, and then do a final polish to buff it up. But that's down to preference and how bad your actual paintwork is. So you're gonna need some polish. You're also gonna need some pads, and there are loads and loads and loads available on the market. Okay, there's obviously the smaller ones for the smaller pad and the bigger ones for the bigger pad. Okay, so these are the foam ones I recommend. Um, and there's lots and lots. I use the Roop system, I'm going to explain why in a minute. Okay, but for this demo, I'm actually going to be using these new flexi pad ones. So you can see they're quite a lot um, thinner, okay, and they've got a rounded edge, all right, as opposed to sort of a straight edge. Okay, now the beauty of this is when you start machine polishing, you'll sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, find because this has got a sharp edge, a sharp edge. I mean, if your polishing pad, okay, isn't flat and you're rotating on an edge, okay, sort of going across the paint like that, you're going to get polishing marks, and you'll see them. All right, they're really, really horrific. Okay, in in the right um, light. The beauty of these is, if you are slightly on an edge, you're on a <coughs> round edge, so the chances of you actual putting um, sort of polishing pad marks on are less, and I like that. Okay, we also like the fact that these ones have got holes in. Okay, so once it's loaded onto your machine polisher, okay, that's excellent for sort of locating it in the middle, but also for heat dissipation as well. All right, and I haven't used these yet, but as you can see, they're quite a lot thinner than the Roops ones I usually use. So I'm actually quite excited to use these, and Clay Cloth Company very kindly sent me a set to try. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Okay, I'm going to sort of do a, a review on these. Okay, as part of this um, part two, two tutorial, tutorial for you guys. So we've got a machine, we've got some polish, okay, we've got some pads. What other stuff are you gonna need? Okay, well, you're gonna need <clears throat> some masking tape, all right? Some detailers tape. Um, don't use normal masking tape because it tends to leave a, leave a residue. And essentially all you're gonna be doing is wherever you're a machine polishing, you're, you're gonna be next to rubber and trim. You're gonna mask up all of that trim. Okay, it's going to protect it in case your machine polisher goes onto it and you don't want to damage and um, trim rubber and all that kind of stuff. All right, and it's also going to protect it if any of the compounds and polishes go onto it. Okay, it's got a tendency to dry and it could stain it. Okay, so preparation for machine polishing is essential and it takes quite a long time to vigilantly go around your car, mask up everything, and then you can sort of crack on with a bit more confidence. You're going to need some tape. Okay, you're also going to need some kind of inspection light. Okay, all right. Now, um, the ones I use are by Sealy, and they range about a few between 50 and 100 pounds. That isn't cheap. Uh, there are more expensive ones on the market, but if you're just starting, just go to your local garage or your supermarket and get one of these, okay? Um, LED ones are good, okay? And that's gonna give you an opportunity to um, inspect it initially. You're gonna do one sort of uh, rotation or, or one pass with your machine polisher, all right? Have a look at it, all right? Have a look at how much it's, it's come off. You might need to go more aggressive. Okay, you, you might um, sort of get rid of all the scratches and go straight to a polisher one, all right? Okay, but do that on a test sort of area or on your vehicle, all right? That's probably the most difficult bit. Which one do I start with? An aggressive compound, a medium, a light, a finishing polish? Okay, well, if you've only got light scratches, try a finishing polish or a light compound. If you've got slightly heavier sort of scratches, etc., go for a medium. If that isn't sort of cutting enough after your initial inspection, go up, all right? All right, you don't want to go heavy handed in, take off half your clear coat when you only needed to take off a little bit at the, at the start. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So you're going to need a torch, all right? 
In conjunction with your torch, you're going to need some panel wipe. And if you look back at part one, we ended with panel wiping our panel down, okay? And, and why did we do that? We want to get rid of all the um, polishes and waxes and that have been left over, okay? We want to extract all those glazes and fillers that are in the cracks, okay? So we want a clear view of what we've got to deal with. When we see how bad the paintwork is, we can then make a decision as to where we're going to start with our processing. So the ones I use, as you know, um, Alien Magic, Prep Pro, really rate this stuff. Okay, really, really good. All right. Also, that's what I used to use, Panel White G Technic. Um, quite cheap. Used to use that on onto the Alien Magic one, but I've still got some of that left. All right. And IPA, okay, is a good alternative. All right. So if you haven't got any dedicated panel wipe and you've got some IPA cleaner, all right, do that. Um, so you're going to do that when you start. And then every time you do a pass, we're going to show you outside, remove the polish, give it a blast with this, all right, to extract any hidden polish that's got caught in the, in the um, exposed in, into the cracks, etc. And you, you're constantly reviewing, constantly reviewing. Then do a pass, take off the polish with your cloth, spray with panel wipe, have a look. How am I doing? Do I need to go more aggressive or can I go on to the next stage, which is a lesser compound or even a finishing polish? So you're going to need some chemicals. You're going to need some water. And I can't, for the life of me, remember why I said to myself, you're going to need some water. It'll come back to me. I don't know, nice Alien Magic bottle. See, a bit of pro, promo for Alien Magic. Never sees an opportunity. Great, cool. What else are you going to need? You're going to need lots and lots and lots of cloths, lots of microfiber cloths. Again, get some good quality ones because the whole idea of this is to remove scratches, not put them in. All right, so when you're taking off your panel wipe and you're taking off your polish, have good quality microfibers. All right, so you're looking at those nice plush ones, the 70-30, so 70% polyester, 30% polyamide. Okay, keep it. Um, invest in some good ones, all right? Please don't buy the cheap ones because what you'll find is you're probably, when you get to the finishing stages, when you're coming to the end and you've got your really soft compound, your really soft sort of pad, which is, you know, really, really soft, you don't want to do all that good work and then go and use a substandard cloth and put loads of scratches back in it, all right? And I've done that before myself. I've wondered why am I not getting to the point I want to, okay? So um, I think that's about it. There, there might be other stuff Okay, but that's essential. Machine polisher. You need your polish. You need your pads. Okay, you need your masking table, detailer's tape. You need an inspection light. Okay, um, you need your panel wiper IPA. Haven't got a clue why you need water, but it's there. Okay, um, and that is it. So, don't be scared of this process. All right, there is a bit of an investment at the start. Okay, but you don't have to buy expensive stuff like this. Okay, you can, can go a bit cheaper if you want. Okay, so the next bit we're going to go on to, all right, is why I'm using this system. Um, and it's probably, um, if you can find a system similar to this, you're onto a winner right from the start. So let's have a look at what polish and pad combination system I'm using. <laughs> So, okay, before we go outside, just a quick chat about what I'm using. So, as you can see here, I am using the Roops system, okay? Now, I've been using this system for years and years and years. And they, it's, it's a system that I used when I started because I think it's awesome. They're helping you out, all right? They are telling you, okay, they're, they're matching stuff together. So, you can see they've got a blue, a green, a yellow, and a red. Blue is a coarse compound. Going down, green is a medium coarse compound. Yellow is a fine cut compound, and then white is that ultra fine sort of finishing, okay, polish. But it gets even better than that. They color code their pads as well, okay? So I'm gonna use the little ones, okay? They got a coarse blue one. Scares the bejesus out of me when I'm using this one, okay? The first time I used this coarse one, I thought, what am I doing, okay? So top tip number two, main tip, okay? Practice on, on a bonnet or, or some panel from a scrapyard first. So that's the blue one, okay? That uh, goes with the blue one. We've got green pads, okay, for the green one, okay, we've got yellow pads, okay, for the yellow one, and we've got white pads, okay. And these roots um, have been going years and years and years, and they're very good at what they do, okay. So they've done the research, okay, they, and they're telling us that the, the harsh compound goes well with that pad, the green with the green, the yellow with the yellow, and the white with the white. And common sense, they get less sort of aggressive, less abrasive, going from quite a hard sponge or foam to almost like cotton wool, really nice and soft. So you can understand, okay, that you, if you used all of these in a four stage process, you're gonna cut, cut hard, get rid of all the big scratches. You're then gonna start sort of going um, less aggressive because if you're using that in a harsh compound, the actual compound itself is gonna start putting micro scratches in. It has to, because it's gotta cut. 
So once you've done that, okay, you'll have got rid of the majority of the scratches, but then you're going to have to sort of go back and correct a bit of the damage that that one's done. So you use a green one and so on and so on. So when you come to the last one, okay, you'll have, you'll have really, really nice smooth paintwork. There'll be slight microscopic scratches of that or, or, on the yellow one, just to do that final cutting. All right, this one here, okay, which is still got slight abrasion in, we'll just get rid of them final ones and can give you that final high gloss finish. All right, that's the theory. Okay, and they also color code their cloths. I don't think there's any difference in them, but they've got the green cloth for when you're taking off your green polish. Yeah, you've got a yellow one for your yellow, blue and white. Okay, so from a beginner's point of view, I think it's awesome. All right, you don't have to worry about, okay, well, which, which one am I going to use with my yellow? They've already told you. Okay, so um, other manufacturers do, do similar systems. Okay, but I think this one is awesome. And I still use this system to, 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 to this day. I've got used to it. I know what the cutting power of the green is as opposed to the yellow. Okay, so... And really, really clever idea and good for beginners, all right? Um, and they've got exactly the same in the large pads. It's exactly the same system. But for um, my demo, like I said, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to try some other stuff. So I'm going to use these new ones by um, FlexiPad, which we've already quickly discussed. So just another sort of word of caution. The colour coding doesn't sort of cross-map to everyone, all right? For example, um, we've got the... This white one here, okay, um, by FlexiPad, um, I believe is their heavy cut one. So that's probably comparable to sort of a blue or a, a green. All right, we've got the, what's the other one I've got? We've got the yellow one, okay, which is medium. So that's sort of there. And then we've got their black one is their fine one, which is a white one in roots, okay. So um, different manufacturers do, do different systems, all right. So for my demo, what I'm going to be doing, okay, I am going to, because the paintwork isn't that bad, I'm going to use the yellow, okay, which is their medium cut, all right, because I've already tested it and that's taking away pretty much all the scratches, okay, and then I'm going to go on to the finishing one. So I'm going to do a two-stage machine polish. If it was um, in worse condition, I'd use the white one, heavy cut. Okay, I'd then go down to the yellow and then I'll finish on the black, a three-stage machine polish, but I'm just going to be using those two and I'm going to use it in conjunction with I'm going to go the flexi pad yellow to roots green okay and then I'm going to go with black initially with a fine but I'm also going to try it with a white as well okay so you can see okay you've got to try this stuff you've got to see what works for you but I'm quite excited to, to try these and they are a lot thinner I love the rounded edge okay I think that's a top product I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's as good as the roots polishing pads I'm sure it's, it will I've used FlexiPad polishing pads before, you know, that when you're applying your wax, they're a top product, okay? So um, that's where we are. We're going to go outside, we're going to have some fun. I'm going to split the carbonic into three, okay? I'm going to leave one with no machine polishing in. I'm going to have one third, okay, with um, these two, all right? So two stage machine polish, okay? And I'm going to leave one just with a one stage. So I'm going to have no machine polish, one stage machine polish just with this. Okay, and then I'm going to show you with, with two-stage polish. And hopefully when I use this coarser one, you're going to see that all the scratches have gone, but it almost leaves a white hue. And that's the aggressive nature of the polish and the pad being there to get rid of the scratches. Okay, but because it's so aggressive, it does leave micro scratches in there. Hopefully the black one will get rid of all them and give us the final finish we're after. So that's where we are. Let's go and have some fun. So because it's a nice day, I've decided to come out and just show you. So just getting the reflection of the sun, you can see all the swirl marks and that's essentially induced by poor wash and dry procedures. So we're going to split this bonnet into three. I'm going to leave one not polished, one section with a single stage machine polish and then the final section with two and then do a comparison now ideally you should be doing this in, inside okay so you can turn the lights off and use your inspection light okay to sort of check your work and see how you're getting on but you can quite clearly see it's covered in those nasty sort of spidery web swirl marks so let's go and get the machine polisher out and have a play so just about to start this uh this part okay so just split that into three okay just before we start you can see what i was talking to in part one of this tutorial that is stained what i think tfr 
Okay, so that's quite an aggressive TFR that at some point in this bonnet's history it's been left there. So it'll be interesting to see okay, how well we can polish them out. Okay, so let's load up the machine polisher. Okay, and start work. Okay, so this is the first bit we're going to do. We're going to be using our bigger Roops machine polisher. And sort of the first um, sort of tip is when you're polishing your actual car, just get rid of the flex and put it over, you, over, your, uh, over your shoulder. Now, because this is initial sort of use, okay, I have preloaded, okay, this, this pad with some of the medium um, compounds. And all I've done is put a bit there and I've massaged it in, okay. Now, some people apply detailing sprays, but I avoid that, especially if they've got wax in and all that kind of stuff. But I just uh, sort of primed this pad, okay, just so it's got some of the compound in. And that's just my personal way of doing it. Some people don't bother, they just go straight in. Some people use detailing sprays, but I, I like to load up my pad initially. So when we're looking at this first bit. Now, the first thing we're going to do, okay, is just show you how much sort of... Okay, because this one's dry, okay, you just need four or five P-shaped spots on your pad. Okay, some people do three, some people four or five, but the first one I do five, okay, all right, um, and that's all you need. All right, so it's a couple of tips. I'm going to continually stop and start this video, but when you're doing it, you want to be doing the whole sort of sequence in a one -hour. You don't want to be stopping, starting, and all that kind of stuff, but I'll sort of take you through the various steps. Um, just to give you a fighting chance yourself. So the very first step, okay, you should be, um, I'm going to sort of split this into sort of two, okay, I usually go for sort of one and a half foot square, so you're going to, you've got to, um, you can't do too big a, a, a sort of an area at once, all right, so you've got your product applied, all right, before you even switch it on, okay, you're just applying that product to the area that you're going to be working on. Okay. And the reason why we do that is if we leave it all on and go and don't sort of spread it out, all right, um, you're going to have a lot of concentration of product in one area and it's going to sling all over the place. So this uh, has a secondary gain of, of putting it across the whole sort of target area that you're going to be machine polishing um, and you take it from there. Now, the next step, okay, is, is trying to slowly spread that out. So um, I switch, and this is just my technique, switch my machine down to its lowest setting. And all I'm gonna do is gently okay, run my machine polish over and spread this out. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna just quickly show show you um, now. Now, um, when you're actually using your machine polisher, okay, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I like these big foots because you, you've got a sort of a handhold there, all right, but you're not pushing down. So all you're doing, okay, is supporting the weight, applying a bit of pressure, I use that to control it. And the key is to keep this pad, okay, horizontal with the actual paint. If you start machine polishing like that, okay, at an angle, especially with these um, pads that haven't got the benefit of this nice curve, you've got, they're gonna leave a trail, okay, of sort of buffing marks behind. Okay, so hold it flat, okay, and you're just going nice and nice and slowly. So I'll reposition the camera and then I'll show you this bit in action. So all we've done at this point on the lowest speed is basically spread the product over our target area here. All right. Like I said, you wouldn't be stopping and starting. I'm just doing it. All right. <clears throat> now you can see um, it's all spread over. The next point now is to um, actually start cutting, cutting back. So I'm going to reapply, okay, the polishing pad, um, machine onto it. Turn the speed up to about four or five and start cutting away on this target area.
what you saw me there is I'm just going nice and slow, applying not too much pressure. I'm just going in straight lines, okay, and then overlapping by about 50%. So I'm going over nice and gently. Okay, there's no point in going quick. This machine also does all the work going over, coming back, overlapping. Okay, we're doing that, and then we're going the other way, exactly the same technique, okay. And we'll do that sort of four or five times before we have to stop get rid of all the residue and have another look. Okay, so I'm gonna reload my pad because like I said, this is the first, the first application. Exactly the same again, spread our product over. Table over our shoulder and off we go again. So once we've done that, like I say, straight lines overlapping 40, 50 percent. Okay, once you've done anywhere between sort of four and six sort of passes, okay, it's time to get rid of the actual polish, panel wipe again, and inspect how you're getting on. So uh, let's clean this panel up. So a nice plush microfiber. Now, as always, as we're taking products off, constantly rotate your cloth. This comes, this roots polishes come off really really nicely really impressed with that polishing pad actually there was no sort of didn't induce much wobble into the machine kept it nice and flat okay really really nice pad all right a bit concerned it was so sort of thin but no absolutely not probably more controllable so that's as remove the excess now I'm going to panel wipe it removing any remnants of compound. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a proper, I'm gonna show you properly a bit, a bit later on the actual final results, but that is one pass with a medium compound. I'll just show you the results now. So 
I'll just quickly show you I sort of stopped there so you can see all that staining that was there from previous you can actually see the line it's all gone in terms of scratches pretty much all gone and we've still got okay so we're going to do the next side okay of this panel two stage then we'll compare it to an untreated one we'll get the lights a bit lower get an inspection light out and I'll show you so I'm just going to leave that one with one stage machine polish okay I'm going to go on to the second one now and put a two stage machine polish so uh, I'll do a bit of a time warp on this one okay and uh, see how we get on so as you can see nice and easy so on this one I'm just going to finish single stage on that bit there okay and then I'm going to go on to I'm going to do two stages with uh, this panel here so I'm going to do exactly the same as I did on that one but I'm in addition going to do um, one full stage using a finishing pol polish okay so then we can then sort of make the make the comparison all right so we'll have single stage two stage right next to untreated okay and we'll get the inspection light out out and look at the difference Okay, so uh, time for time warp, me thinks. Okay, so that's uh, that one done, single stage. We've now loaded on the finer compound, the finishing compound and the finishing pad. Okay, and we're gonna do stage two on this panel here. And then hopefully see the comparison between one stage, two stage, and basically no stage. Okay, so uh, let's time warp again. So we're going to do a comparison under normal lights. This is essentially what people are seeing. This is uh, the three panels. Okay, so this is the untreated. Okay, so I'm going to do this under inspection light in a minute, but you can see all that staining of previous product on the untreated. And that is two stage pass on that one and a single stage pass on that one and all that chemical staining is gone so sort of this is how the naked eye would see it that one there okay untreated it's got a nasty sort of matte finish to it and moving back even with a single stage all the scratches got there's some deep scratches in there etc which if, you know this is a my own car I'd get rid of okay but I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a sort of a slightly white haze to all the scratches that are gone. But then you go over to the two stage one and it just pops. The difference between one and two stages is, is really noticeable. All right. So, yes, all the scratches come out on the majority with compounding when you go on to your finishing. It just takes it to that. It's, it's what everyone's after that mirror light shine and the horrible stained untreated one so I'm wait till it gets dark get an inspection light out and just look at the comparison as to what it's done with all those nasty swirls that we were seeing earlier okay so this is one sort of tip i forgot about that's quite an important one um if you're using lots and lots of, of these um polishing pads all right and um, you're probably using if you're doing one stage probably four i use one per quarter of the car as soon as you finish with one just drop it in a bucket full of diluted apc and it just stops the polish hardening okay before you get a proper chance to get your toothbrush out and really rinse it all right so that's a top tip so as and when you finish with them just uh, throw them in face down into your bucket of diluted apc stops all that polishing hardening okay making it a lot easier to sort of uh, wash them afterwards and prolong the the uh, sort of lifespan of your, of your polishing pads 
So uh, an extra top tin tip thrown in for free. So we've taken the car bonnet inside and this is the sort of demonstration of the difference. So we'll start off with, I guess if we look carefully, this was the one with just single stage sort of compounding. You can see all the scratches have gone, just a few little ones left and sort of a white, slightly white hue move on to the two so that's the white hue move on to the two stage see it's a lot cleaner okay so we go in a bit more see there's still almost like a rippling effect go on to the so much cleaner with that final finishing and we go over to the untreated one well So you can see the mess that's in. So that's not machine polished at all. Machine polished, two stage, one stage, a bit more, lots clear. That's two stage, and like I said, probably go a bit further. So the difference between that and that is quite considerable, and you can see. See the sort of mess with the untreated one, as opposed to a nice clean one. And if you actually look on that one, you can see all the staining, deep scratches. Go over to this one, clean. So I can't really make it much fairer than that. And then single stage, you can see there's a few bits. The main scratches have gone. And then moving back to the two stage one, a lot better. So, hopefully, this uh, tutorial has been a benefit to you. Obviously, the next stage is going to be applying some protection. So, part three of this tutorial series is going to be on waxes, sealants, and all that kind of stuff. So, comments welcome. Any top tips from our professionals and business business owners are always welcome. So uh, Andy from The Car Boutique, that's part two on machine polishing.